We've heard it before, now we're hearing it again, perhaps louder than ever. Canada is failing to innovate, and it could cost the economy big time if we don't do something about it. The Science, Technology and Innovation Council has released its annual State of the Nation. It compares innovation here to our global competitors. The conclusion? It has continued to deteriorate. In fact, it is on business innovation that Canada faces its most profound and urgent science, technology and innovation challenge. The problem, according to the report, is that businesses aren't spending on research and development. We ranked 18th on this in 2006. We've since dropped to 26th place. In that time, total business investment in R&D is down by a billion dollars. Those same concerns have been echoed by prominent voices in both the public and private sectors, most recently by the head of one of Canada's biggest banks. The CEO of CIBC says we need to stop hitching our hopes for growth on manufacturing, a low loony and low interest rates. In a speech last week, Victor Dodig told a crowd in Ottawa, over the last decade, Canada lost 10,500 manufacturing plants. The reality is that going forward, economic growth will come from different kinds of businesses across all key sectors of our economy, all driven by innovation. Kenneth Knox is the chair of the Science, Technology and Innovation Council. So now let's talk a little bit about this comparison between Canada and other countries. We're, we're falling down that ranking. What is it that those other countries are doing that Canada is really missing the boat on? Well, thanks, Diane, and thanks for having me. Uh, there are three different things that we measured uh, using the data available with our comparator countries around the world. Uh, one of them is the actual spending on research and innovation. Another one is on IT uh, expenditures. And the third one is uh, absorbing talent into their workforce. So on all of those three things, uh, we measured and uh, regrettably came up lacking on all three. Yeah, that's very discouraging. Um, so what's the problem? I mean, when we talk about this, the spending is not keeping up with what it should be. Why not? Well, we're not sure. So uh, we, we did not mine the data to determine the route cause or root cause of this. Uh, that's for further study that needs to be done. And there, as you had just indicated, are lots of people who are waging in on that as to how, how we actually fix the problem. Uh, but we do know that uh, one of the areas they're concerned about is the complacency in business. But kind of like when I was in high school, I thought, well, if I had 67%, I was probably okay. Didn't realize until I got to uh, my senior year that I wasn't eligible to go to some of the universities that I wanted to go to. Complacency had set in with me and we're worried that some companies that uh, for various reasons uh, aren't keeping up on the innovation scale are actually uh, have lulled themselves into a complacent environment. Hmm. Now I'm curious about this detail regarding absorbing talent uh, into the the workplace uh, to try and innovate etc because uh, your report does note that actually in terms of our education and creation of knowledge in Canada we're doing quite well but there's this issue of then translating that into uh, commercial success Success. T tell us a little bit more about that. So there are two aspects that the report focused on, Diane. One was that we're failing on the business innovation part. Uh, the other one is that we're not keeping up on the education front. That is, we're doing very well, and our high school kids and the 15-year uh, 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 old uh, scores are doing very well and so on. But then when you measure that against competing nations, uh, we find that they're actually doing more, particularly on the research side, uh, than we are. And so we have to continue to invest on the research side of things, but we have to then convince businesses to absorb our talent into their, into their workforces. And of course, there's a debate that rages. Are we not graduating the kind of skilled workforce that companies need, or uh, are they just uh, uh, not accepting them in? And that is another area, Diane, where you will have guests on your program that have views on that, and there's more study needs to be done to find out what the definitive cause is. Yeah, it seems really strange when I mean, you talk about, you know, have to be, con aren't convinced of absorbing these people into their workforce. It seems absolutely baffling. But let's just talk a little bit about uh, who really has the responsibility here to make this happen. Obviously, there's a role for the government in encouraging innovation, but of course the private sector uh, has responsibility as well. Where do you see the onus at this point? 
So what we report on is that uh, we call it a systems approach or everybody uh, needs to participate. And I, th I think the analogy that I would use there is that uh, building an economy for a country is very much like building a star hockey team. Unless you're prepared to pass the puck back and forth and not blame each other when, when the puck doesn't go in the goal, then we're never going to be a competitive team. And we need to develop that team spirit. So certainly the private sector uh, has to come up with sector strategies of some sort so that we can ensure from a governmental point of view and from an education point of view that we're playing the role that needs to be done uh, to help them be successful. They are going to drive it at the end of the day. Government can't force feed them to be innovative, that's for sure. What government can do is take a look at the toolkit that it has, both indirect support for business and direct for support for business, and say, do we have that mix right? Or are there other instruments that we should put in place so that we can help companies innovate? Are there things that we have in a policy perspective that are actually holding companies back from going from small, medium size to large? Unintended consequences of some of the levers that we've been pulling over the last, last period of time. And then there's the university sector that also needs to be involved in the conversation to ensure that we're do, doing the right thing from the point of view of graduating people, that's colleges, polytechs and university, and also are we doing the kind of research that is going to help those companies innovate. A systems approach, Diane, is what we need in Canada. All right. Well, I was fascinated also to see that small companies are doing very well. We'll have many more interviews on this subject, I'm sure. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you very much.